There are times when everyone demands... Quiet, please. Yet without sound and the ability to hear it, life would be entirely different. It is essential to communication, to understanding, to man's fulfillment in a civilized world. Only the deaf know the meaning of a totally silent world. But too much sound, unpleasant, unwanted sound, is noise. Every day, more and more, we are all prisoners of noise in city or suburb, on the farm, outside, or inside. Like other kinds of pollution, noise is said to be the price we pay for economic progress. Every year, the world will become louder and louder unless we conquer the scourge of noise. What is Three, sound? Two, one, fire. Sound consists of variations in air pressure. It travels on airwaves similar to the waves in water. It penetrates metal. Even water, four times faster than in air. Physically, sound in the air is produced by vibration. Caused by one solid hitting another by friction. By turbulence. Or, indirectly, by resonance. Sound is powerful. Ultrasonics, which only animals hear, can clean teeth. Or metal parts and discover flaws in materials. Audible sound frequently serves a useful purpose. Sound is analyzed from three aspects. Source, that is the vibrating object. Transmission, which must occur in some medium, either gas, liquid, or solid. And receiver, which is your ear. A miracle of miniature engineering. The eardrum, shaped like a cone of a loudspeaker, receives sound vibrations. Connected to it are the three smallest bones in the body. The hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup, which transmits sound to the inner ear and amplify or modify sound pressure. In the tiny snail-like inner ear are thousands of microscopic hair cells. The cells convert the mechanical properties of sound into electrical signals, which are sent along the auditory nerve to the brain and on to every organ and nerve center. The two main elements of sound are volume or amplitude and frequency or pitch. Whether a noise offends the ear depends mainly on both volume and pitch. Volume is expressed in decibels. Three decibels represent the smallest change in sound detectable by the average ear. Two lawnmowers make twice as much noise as one, or a three decibel increase. For each doubling of the distance, there is a six decibel decrease in amplitude.
a significant increase in noise is 10 decibels. Let's listen to a few along the decibel scale. Gentlemen, in reply to your letter of February 14th. <laughs> Over 120 decibels, or some 100 billion times more energy than a whisper, the ear feels pain. Frequency is measured in cycles per second. The normal ear hears a range of pitch from 20 to 20,000 cycles. The more frequent the vibrations, the higher the pitch. The ear is most sensitive to those frequencies between 1,000 and 5,000 cycles. More than any other form of pollution, noise is personal. Intermittent or unexpected noise often startles and frightens, triggering the body's defense system. One man's pleasure is another man's pain. Studies show that the hearing of many teenage musicians quickly degenerates to the level of old folks. Noise making has always been an expression of virility in man and beast. An outlet for frustration a demonstration of power. But when preventable noise disturbs the relationship between man and his environment, or between man and man, it is time to yell for quiet. Machine noise at home or at work is directly related to the number of sources. Sustained exposure to noise of 90 decibels or higher can result in hearing loss, from which more than 18 million people suffer. It has become a major category of industrial injury with billions in compensation at risk. The hair cells in the inner ear are helpless to protect themselves. And once damaged, neither a hearing aid nor an operation can restore the ability to hear. Earplugs or muffs reduce volume up to 35 decibels. Good verbal conversation requires talking Hotel? some 15 decibels above Where's background noise. In his office. More prevalent than hearing loss is the insidious cumulative effect of chronic noise on mind and body. The stress caused by too much noise affects the cardiovascular system, raising blood pressure and the amount of cholesterol in the blood. Excessive noise also results in mistakes and accidents at work. Headaches, nausea, and nervous tension. Irritability, fatigue, and sleeplessness. For optimum sleeping, the noise level should not exceed 35 decibels. Good sleepers may produce noise. Laugh, and the world laughs with you. Snore and you sleep alone. These are the unwanted sounds that constantly threaten man's sanity. You may fool yourself into thinking you can get accustomed to them, but your nervous system pays an exorbitant, unseen price. Citizens increasingly angered by noise clamor for abatement. Robert Barron, a pioneer fighter for quiet says, air pollution kills us slowly but silently. Noise makes each day a torment. Local anti-noise ordinances are proliferating, difficult to enforce, and in many cases ill-conceived due to ignorance. More effective would be preemptive uniform regulations, state by state, that set realistic maximum noise levels. 
New York and California became the first to regulate truck noise by limiting it to 86 decibels at a distance of 50 feet. The truck industry responded by meeting this standard. But noise critics insist on even tougher laws. They blame industry for noise standards that are too high. resent the courts accepting noise annoyance as an inescapable part of 20th century life. And reject the claim that noise abatement is a luxury we can't afford. Our vital transportation industry on which we depend for our daily survival has heard the message loud and clear. The coming of commercial jet travel has turned airports into major noise centers. Pratt & Whitney Aircraft, the largest manufacturer of aircraft engines in the world, has made significant progress in noise reduction. Jet engine noise comes mainly from the exhaust and the fan. The thrust created to propel an airplane depends on the quantity of air passing through the engine and the jet exhaust velocity. The first turbofan engine reduced jet exhaust roar by about 10 decibels on takeoff, but at the same time emphasized the high-pitched single-frequency tones from the fan during landing. Pratt & Whitney's newest engine that powers the Boeing 747 incorporates all the company has learned about noise control. This super power plant produces more than twice the thrust, yet generates considerably less noise than earlier models. Traffic noise is also a common annoyance. Just as in aircraft, noise from trucks is compounded of several different elements, though the public blames the exhaust most of all. 98% of exhaust noise can be controlled. Contrary to popular myth, properly designed mufflers do not rob engines of power or waste fuel. Too often, truck noise due to inadequately or unmuffled engines is unfairly blamed on one of the most important safety devices ever made for diesel vehicles, the Jacobs engine brake. This retarder is a hydraulic attachment to the engine that converts it into a power-absorbing air compressor. It holds the truck at a steady speed without using regular brakes on any terrain. Going uphill, trucks make this kind of sound. The same truck restrained by a Jacobs engine brake makes a new sound, approximately at the same level. This is the sound of safety, a necessary noise to prevent runaway vehicles and accidents. But this new sound can be controlled by proper muffling. In cooperation with other manufacturers, Jacobs has solved its noise problem with an integrated muffler design. Other sources of truck noise must also be identified and controlled. The fan. The engine itself, which in this test is being operated without fuel to demonstrate the sound of its moving parts. The transmission and drive train. And tires, the whine of which increases with load and speed. Here a truck coasts with engine off. Tire noise can be reduced through better tread design. Also, asphalt is a quieter surface than concrete. To decrease total truck noise even slightly below legislated standards requires a reduction of all elements, not just one or two, plus the human one, the driver himself. America's quietest city, Memphis has earned this honor as the result of a vigorous educational campaign against blowing horns. Moreover, all of its city buses are equipped with Jacobs engine brakes. What we got here? Even with better laws and stricter enforcement, noise cannot be legislated out of existence. It must be designed out.
As Pratt and Whitney and Jacobs have done, so must engineers in every industry design for quiet, using a from the ground up systems approach. First, minimize noise at its source by enclosing, muffling, eliminating vibration, surface damping. balancing as compared to an unbalanced impeller. Reducing turbulence or air flowing around and against the surface. Machine noise is unnatural. Quieter, more efficient machines, like this seat blower for an Airbus, last longer and cost little more to make. Better design can also reduce transmission of noise by using materials that act as sound barriers or absorb most of the sound. By changing frequencies, and by substituting plastics for metals. The path of noise is either structure or airborne. This cam causes a structure-borne vibration transmitted to a piece of sheet metal, which in turn becomes a source for airborne noise heard by the ear. Outside noise can be diluted by screening highways with dense vegetation quiet zones in cities where no traffic is permitted, depressed throughways. Noise research is mushrooming. At the University of Hartford, an anechoic or non-echo chamber simulates the free space of a sphere, making possible the study of noise transmission according to volume, frequency, and direction. Under contract with local companies, the Department of Mechanical Engineering analyzes the noise levels of various products and assists in the redesign of components to reduce or eliminate the most objectionable noises. Quieting plant noise for some of the largest industries, United Acoustic Consultants demonstrates a very noisy pneumatic hammer chiseling off the rough spots on a tractor casting. The hammer itself has to be quieted. Then, the casting resonance damped to further reduce the noise to the limits of the Walsh-Healy Act. Pratt & Whitney Aircraft pursues its quest for further noise suppression on outdoor test rigs, in its laboratories, and giant supersonic wind tunnel. In the Torrin Corporation's well-equipped sound labs, a hot wire probe, a super-sensitive instrument, measures the air velocity of an air conditioning fan. And this machine tests for resonance. Our world is small. People are many and everywhere. Unwanted sounds multiply and engulf us. They annoy aggravate, disrupt, intrude, hurt, and impair. At the same time, man welcomes pleasant sounds for contemplation. For serenity. For renewal of his well-being. Privacy is a basic human need, and vital to achieving a better, saner life, indispensable in making sure we, not the machine, come first, is... Now, Gara, you may recite. A noisy noise, a noise, an oyster. What did you say? A noisy noise, a noise, an oyster. What does that mean? Oysters don't like noise either.
The engine brake division of the Jacobs Manufacturing Company has produced this film in the public interest. In trying to overcome our own noise problems, we have become aware of the significant lack of knowledge on this subject by government officials, legislators, and the general public. We hope this film will create a better understanding of the noise problem.